What's going on guys, Teacher X6 here back for a Hasbro review and today we're taking a look at the Earthrise Hoist and this is a line that excites me greatly because modern takes on the G1 like, I mean, sure it's not exactly the alt mode but it is so close, uh, how can you really say it's not, you know, that's exciting. Um, that said, I've got three of the Wave 1 Deluxes. I'm not getting Ironworks or whatever because I just don't have any attachment to them. Um, but this is my least favorite of Wave 1. Uh, and there's a number of reasons why. So this is Hoist, obviously. Uh, he's got his little gimmick here, uh, which does have this little plug-in thing. I assume it's so it can connect to things like Ironworks and stuff like that. Uh, you can drop that down. Spoiler alert, I got the others from Wave 1, so you can put that on. It's fine. It's not. There's nothing really there that's going to actually tow them. Um, and this little wheel barely touches the ground. But it's a nice little thing to have on there. I mean, it's not really hoist without it, right? Uh, so let's, let's look at hoist a little. Uh, you can see that this is painted green and this is green plastic. It's not as obvious in person. Uh, under intense light it is, but it looks worse on camera than I think it looks in person. That said, I really wish that this was casting green and they just like painted this like a light blue or something. Uh, I, Outside of making the headlights transparent, I really don't think there is any point in casting this in the, the clear plastic there that you can see from the bottom. Um, so they should have just done it in the green, matched the rest of the truck, and then we would have only had to deal with this part, which has the windshield being a little off, which is kind of par for the Transformers course. Uh, when it comes to the front, this is kind of what bothers me. Like, Hoist is, you know, a tow truck, and these tires are, they look like bicycle tires almost. I wish the tires were thicker, um, or at least I wish there was something on the bumper that maybe folded down and kind of hit everything a little better, like just a little bit of extra distance on here would have been nice. Uh, my buddy Oscar, uh, he said it would be nice to have like a little flip down winch or something just to kind of hide some of the front gap, and I can't disagree with that. Uh, I think that's a great suggestion. The hands and stuff kind of exposed at the bottom, that doesn't bother me slightly. Um, the back is fine, it would be nice if there was a proper tailgate, but all in all, it's fine. He comes with this little piece here, which can double as a traffic cone, I suppose, if you want. It kind of looks like a traffic cone. Uh, you can peg it into the top here, which is my preferred configuration, because I like to kind of think of it as a traffic cone. Um, but you'll see later, it doesn't really work for my purpose. Uh, I mean, it works for my purpose, but it doesn't necessarily fit the way I want it to. Or you can plug it into the side. Uh, kind of like a cannon. I suppose it could be a traffic cone like this sitting on some kind of like pole or something off to the side. I don't know. Use your imagination. It's your toy. Let me get to what really bothers me about this toy. See this front wheel? So nice that they added silver paint. So nice they added silver paint to the back too. But you peg this wheel from the wheel into the toy and then this wheel pegs from the toy into the wheel. So it's mismatched and that just irks me so bad like why didn't you just use and and believe me I get that you couldn't get this little extra bit of mushroom peg in here with the the space you needed for the legs but you could have just made the front ones peg outwards too uh, especially if you cast this in green as opposed to this transparent blue I don't get the decision and it ends up making the toy feel disjointed to me and it's something I've noticed with the wave 2 toys is also an issue um, actually, no, not the Wave 2, it's the, uh, the Grapple. He has the same issue. Um, and this is the only one from Wave 1 that has this issue. The other ones have the really nice things. So I've had for a while this KBB MP10, uh, which is the downscaled MP10. Um, and I have no real interest in the Earthrise Optimus. I don't, I think Optimus looks fine, but I think the trailer is kind of ridiculous and I don't feel like paying the money for that when I have a nice trailer here. Uh, I will say that this Optimus maybe feels a little small compared to Hoist, but then he also feels small compared to his trailer. Um, I don't think it's the worst offense I've ever seen. I can live with it, but uh, yeah, this is going to be my choice prime. And Hoist here, uh, if we take his little blaster cone thing on, leave it on the top like I prefer to have it, he actually does not fit into my KBB MP10. 
but if you do it on the side as the weird gun or whatever that they consider it, uh, he's just fun. So being that this is just a deluxe figure, it is pretty easy to transform. We start by kind of pulling all this part up like so, uh, and then we can pull that up also like so. From here, go ahead and get the arms out to the side. There's a lot of like so's in this video. We're gonna take this piece down, bring the foot which pegs in around, and around. So once we have that, make sure that this is extended out as far as you can get on that little double hinge system. Uh, that's gonna give you the room to flip his head through like that. We can go ahead and fold these down from here. Go ahead and bring that in place. Might as well go ahead and fold the arms down and around. And let's go ahead and clean up his hands. So fold them down, around, clean up his hands. And there we go. And we'll come back to this piece and basically fold that hinge up. And then you'll see that this will tab into there to kind of clean that up. And then just go ahead and work these around. Oops, almost forgot. The uh, force field, hologram, whatever projector it was. Uh, it has been a while since I've seen Hoist do what Hoist does, but we certainly can't forget that. So there we go, we'll fold that in place. And there we go, we've got Hoist in his robot mode. And uh, yeah, he's fine. Uh, I do think the arms are a little bit long. I don't particularly like that they're connected to this panel thing. I wish you could move the arm independently from it, but it's not a huge deal. Uh, we got the uh, bicep swivel here, an elbow joint and a wrist swivel. So we're gonna say it with hoist and we're not gonna really discuss it further. There's waffles. Uh, I hate the waffles. I mean, they're delicious for breakfast, but I don't really love them on my Transformers. Uh, it's a super cheap way of cutting corners. Um, I think third parties are going to end up capitalizing on this and give us all kinds of little filler pieces, uh, which is a shame because Hasbro really should do that. I shouldn't have to pay some other company probably like 15 bucks for different fillers and things like that. Um, and it's bad, you know, like they're all over the place, but it's the way of doing business anymore with Hasbro. And I don't think Hoist is necessarily the worst offender, but it needs to be addressed anyway. Uh, coming down to the back here, again, I mean the hollow here, part of it is because it folds in like this, but I feel like we would have had an extra panel or something, you know, f a couple years ago that would have hid that. So what can you do? Um, if you want to give him his wrist cannon thing, um, you just kind of peg this in place. I think if I was to guess, I would say a third party company is going to come along and give us something that you can just pop this hand out of its mushroom peg and we'll get a much more elegant looking uh, hand cannon here. Yeah. Another thing that's interesting, and this is unique to Hoist, and it bothers me too, is he's got this crud all over him. Um, you know, like he's been in a fight, which is fine, but it's so sparse. Like, it's nowhere on his body, but his two forearms and then his, his gut. Uh, and unfortunately, since his gut is painted, you can't just get this off. You'd end up taking off the green paint or at least discoloring it around the rest of it, and it would look horrible. Um, so... I really don't like this space gunk. I wish they left it with Siege, uh, but unfortunately they didn't, and it's on Hoist. A quick look at the head sculpt. That's a very nice Hoist head. Uh, I think the overall look of the figure is fine. I do feel like the feet could have come out a little bit more, but they ultimately are fine. He's not falling forward or backward, so you can only complain about that so much. Now, of course, you can see right through him, right through the back. Hello, everybody back there. Uh, but really on his shelf, that's not too much of an issue. So putting him next to my KBB MPP-10, uh, I think that looks great. I am totally happy with that. So it's gonna be a great line to fill out to go with my KBB MP-10. So let's put our hoist back into his vehicle mode and let's get out of here. We're gonna go ahead and take his traffic cone off and please third party make something better uh, because it does look 
just like a traffic cone that he's holding in his hand. We'll go ahead and unclip this. We have to fold these to the side. Without them being to the side, this piece can't come out and his wheel does pop off real easy, so just be careful about that. Fold that in place, fold that back up. So you can see what I meant when I said extend it out as far as it'll go. And that gives you the clearance to get the head tucked away. From here, we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this piece. Now this always gives me a little bit of trouble for some reason and there is some little bit of movement in this piece and I don't know why that makes a difference but when I pull it down a little um, this orange piece does have to slide in here and it does kind of very firmly fit into place you can hear how it clicks there is a, a certain amount of friction to get it in there it doesn't seem like it's gonna break anything but it is something to be aware of um, take these, fold them down, and you can see there's the little uh, posts there, which you have to use the bottom part of the leg there, and that'll clip that in place. From here, make sure the front of your car is up. Bring the door down, and make sure our arm goes between the waist piece like that. Now, you can leave the fists like this, but I just think it looks better to twist them around and not have exposed fingers makes it look less fist-like. So we'll bring that again over to this side. Fists from here. You can go ahead and fold the front of the truck down. And then once that's in place, you can kind of push these to clip a little further back in there. Kind of sets them in right. With these in place like so, everything should be all situated to line up. Um, these are gonna go in there on both sides, but they're not really gonna catch until we end up putting this down. So take this piece and move it on in so that bar goes inwards. And then you'll see that these have two tabs here that go into here. This tab goes up into here. And yeah, that should lock everything into place. So. I usually start with the feet, or the uh, shins here, because I think they're a little bit easier to, or more securing than the rest of it, I should say, not necessarily easier. From there, kind of make sure you got that in place, which should make sure that that's in place, and do the same thing on the other side. And there we go. Our hoist is back into his vehicle mode. Overall, um, there's things I would improve about this, but there is a lot of nostalgia in holding a very, you know, 1980s hoist in my hands. So, yeah, I got it. I'm enjoying the line. Uh, if this is the weakest uh, to me, you know, you may disagree. There's some people who say cliff jumper. Uh, I think they're a little bit crazy, but, you know, uh, to me, this is the weakest of the G1 Wave 1, not including Ironworks. So, this is T2RX6. I hope you guys enjoyed the review, and I will see you next week.